So now I'm gonna try and make the, the not AND gate. So I'm gonna do it over here and see if we can get it working. So I'm pretty much gonna model the inverter because remember the inverter becomes a not OR gate by just adding another input. So this is an OR gate. Right? So inverter, NOR gate, inverter, NOR gate. So I'm gonna model this but then just change the connections between the buttons. And hopefully that should suffice. If we remember the schematic, I mean, I have it right, I have it right there in front of me, but remember the schematic, we have input. I didn't even notice that it said input before. So we have our input power, and then this is our output power. And the input power is only for the logic. It's like our logic power. And then this is the output power to give us a signal of on. And if it's lacking, right, if it diverts this way, then it's just off, obviously. So. This is our input power. We need more buttons. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the push buttons again because I just, I feel like they're a little bit more clear when uh, when I'm pressing them or not because the slide switch is, <clears throat> it's hard to tell sometimes like what's on or off. Okay, button goes here and he has power. And then we have another button that also needs power. So that means another resistor okay and then new button I have one already I think yeah right here okay so that goes in Line them up. all right these buttons are both powered and what we need now are is to jump over the middle so we have gray guy one with the output I just feel like it takes up so much space just to connect the two sides. <clears throat> and then gray guy two is uh, the other output. So that's right here. All right. So the output's going across. And now what we need to do is make these power the transistors, the bases. Base here. Uh, yeah. All right. So base. Okay, so this goes into that base. And then the other uh, transistor should be able to line up next to this guy, kind of like what I was thinking before. Perfect. So the idea here is if <clears throat> collector A has power, let's say, let's say there's power here. Collector A has power, but it can only go through when we click this. And then it goes to B, directly into B, the collector and the, emit, uh, the emitter of A and collector of B are on the same row. When we press the second button, the gate is connected, the base is connected, and uh, the collector can go to the emitter and go to ground. So, well, I'm, I'm making a, na a NAND gate. So I'm kind of building off of, uh, we're kind of building off of these two at the same time. The inverter But I'm working on that first circuit. Yeah, I think I mean I'm getting a little confused because right now I'm thinking I'm copying this, but I'm not. But I think I'm okay. So we need to give we need to give a ground for sure. All right, I think that's it. So this is our power for our input. This is only power for our input. So now we need power for the actual signal. which will be the LED. So we need, all right, so we need power. All right, so we need yet another resistor. Okay. And now the LED needs to go to ground because this is our output. But we need to power, we need to power the collector. Okay. Yeah. So the key here is that um, the power is coming, and it's going to the row that has like the co the collect uh, A's collector and the LED. So they're parallel. And the the idea again is that 
the electricity wants to take the cheapest way home. So he can go through the LED, which is has higher resistance. Or if we open the gates, you can go to home very quickly on this uh, orange wire, which to me looks terrible. So I don't know why he'd want to go there. All right, I need to straighten this out. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> I think this works. Power comes in, wants to go home, forced to go through the, tra the, the, the LED by default, which means it's, it's on by default. And only when we press both of these does it turn off, which is a, the opposite of end, right? So let's try it. I'm gonna plug in power, make sure one last check, nothing is coming off of power that's not resisted. So resisted, resisted, resisted. Um, all right, let's try it. So we have a one, a two, hey. So there is power. <clears throat> Press one, something kinda happens. Oh. It gets brighter and then it turns off. I'm gonna assume that that's fine. The point is that our output is on. It is on until we press both and it turns off, right? So this is our output. And this is similar, um, or it should be <clears throat> the same. Maybe I could use this 0.5 one. Oh, you could see the camera on that, or the light. Uh, so not end. <clears throat> not end. Both are off. And not end is on. So actually, not end is on for the first three. So anytime... Anytime we have at least one zero... Right? Anytime one of the inputs is zero, it's on. When both inputs are on, it's off. And the only time it's off is when both inputs are on. And I think that's how it's working right now. So anytime we have a zero, there's a zero here because we're not pressing it. So there's a one on the A, zero on B, it's, it's, uh, it's on. A one on B, zero on A, it's on. Both are off, it's on. But if both are on, it's off. So that worked. So right now, um, I'm very happy with these three because <clears throat> technically four, because this is also an inverter when we remove this guy, but let's just call him a NOR gate. So we have or one of them bloop, turns on output right here. This guy is a NOR gate. Anyone goes on and he turns off. Bloop. This guy is an AND gate. Boop. Boop. Right? AND gate, both must be on for it to be on. And this guy is a NAND gate. He's the opposite of this guy, which uh, this is a very good uh, demonstration, I guess. So both off and both are off, but this guy is off too, and this guy's on, it's the opposite. Press both, he turns on. Press both, he turns off. <clears throat> so that's really cool. Uh, Again, I'm not happy with this one simply because I cannot use the output. Remember when I tried to use the output, when I turned on one of uh, this guy, the output would still turn on. I'm assuming because of the current, the, the, the basis current itself emits to ground too. That current is enough. So maybe what I'll do is I'll look up schematics for a, an AND gate and see if... <coughs> We'll see why this must be wrong somehow. Um, the other uh, option is to flip this one with an inverter, similar to what I was thinking for the OR gate. So I'm going to see what the best approach is. Um, but I, I think it's probably the time where I should start looking stuff up more because I don't want to go down too far doing the wrong thing and then have to backtrack a lot. Uh, so again, I think this guy is good. I think this guy is pretty good. Um, I think this guy's great. Uh, and this really I built from this, which I got from the schematic. So this isn't really my credit. Um, it's, it's basically this, but we just connect the, the, you know, 
we make these switches depend on each other. So these guys depend on each other. Um, I think I probably could do this with one transistor as well. If I just connect, if I get, if this guy powers this guy, so that this guy doesn't have his own resistor, but I think it's maybe because I was copying the AND gate first. That's why I ended up with two transistors. I'm not really sure, but I'm going <clears> to, <throat> um, I'm going to check and see. I mean, right now an OR gate and a NAND gate should make an XOR gate. So maybe I should try that first. Maybe I should try that first. Um, but I need to use an AND gate for that. So I'm going to see what I do next. 